What's up divas and divos? It's your girl April and it is Real Talk Wednesday. So I decided to do the video right here in front of my makeup desk in my bathroom because I was getting ready and I said, you know what? I'm going to do it now so that I can get it done and get it published so that you guys don't have to wait too long. And so maybe I'll straighten up as I'm going along, who knows, but yeah. So anyway, the hair that I'm actually rocking today is the Brazilian Loose Wave from AliExpress, which is from Modern Show Hair. And I already went ahead and edited the video, so I will post it up soon. This is actually the second unit that I made from them. Um, the first unit, I did do the video and never posted it because the young lady that was working for them, okay, she was like totally, like she was out of pocket, okay? Really, she was out of pocket. Um, coming on my videos, being real nasty and rude, rushing me, just being real disrespectful. So I decided to put in like a a little blurb at the beginning of the video and let people know. So anyway, when I was doing that, someone else contact, contacted me from that same um, store, I like Express store, and this time it was a, a male, a man. He was so nice. He was so professional. I said, you know what? I'll give this another go around. And so I decided to do this hair. But I will be honest and tell you, the hair is like amazing. Like they got some bomb ass hair on their Ally Express store. Really amazing. The first unit I did was so pretty. Like, oh my God, it was so pretty. And I will get around to uploading that one as well. But first time around, it will be this one. So just stay tuned for this. But also stay tuned for the second one, which will have that little blurb. Because I was kind of pissed off. I wasn't kind of I was very upset in that video with her whole mannerism and I'm I'm just not the one for all those type of games don't come at me like that indirectly and then directly my thing is this don't come for me unless I send for you bottom line do not so yeah but the hair is beautiful like this is 24 inch oh man I just can't begin to tell you how much I love their hair so really affordable and yes one of my favorite stores on Ally Express next to Rosa Beauty Grace length hair, um, Grace hair. There are quite a few. So if you want to see a video of my favorite um, I like Express sellers that sell the best hair, then leave a comment below and thumbs the video up and I'll make sure to do that because I've had enough experience with some. Some are really good hair and some are just like out of this world's hair. Like you cannot beat their hair at all. But also the necklace that I have on is from Beast Us, which I did a humongous haul on on their accessories. This was like four dollars for this actual neck piece, and you know four dollars you cannot beat that. You can get these elsewhere for like thirty or forty dollars. They have beautiful statement jewelry, earrings, necklaces, rings, purses, all kind of accessories. If you make jewelry, you can find the beads to make them. But they are so reasonable and I'll post the video and the link for you guys below. And if I forgot, please forgive me. So, yeah. And the makeup look that I'm actually wearing today and hope you guys can see it. Is from my Sasha, um, excuse me, my Sedona Lace. Um, palette which is Little Miss Grace palette pretty Little Miss Grace palette and I love this palette because the colors are so pretty so I did do a get ready with me video on that as well as the, my facial products are from the black up black up cosmetics line which is geared to women of color and my lipstick is an actually a new LA girl matte velvet lipstick which they sent me three of their lipsticks there's 26 out of the bunch and they sent me three of them along with some BB cream and other things that they sent me so yeah I will be posting a video up on that soon so if you're interested in getting a real talk video um advice or just need to talk and hash it out you can always email me at muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com and i will get back to you please make sure to put in the subject line real talk and that's about it so let's get on to this video start off with is this one it says it's a time sensitive real talk um court case on august 16th so thank goodness that tomorrow is the 12th or today is the 12th rather when you get this video so i'm going to just go ahead and read this i'm hoping that you can select this email in time you can call me jane i have a 15 year old son who wears a size 14 shoe and class in men with his braces his father is okay let me see 
I have a 14 year old son who wears a size 4 I have a 15 year old son who wears a size 14 and in shoe 14 shoe and class in men with braces. His father is 10 years older than me and we're and when we're together was when we were together was violent and verbally abusive. He even spit in he even spit on me after years of battle and me saying fuck you. I got a child support order and we and we were through. Okay, so basically, because the wording is a little bit off, it's, um, he spit on her after years of battle and saying, fuck her. Hmm. My son has, ex has an excellent relationship with his father without me forcing it on him. He owes me $40,000 in child support. Once he found out that I was having another child, he said he wasn't going to contribute to another man's child. Fast forward, seven years he got caught by child support and they, are and they started taking double taking double two months later okay so two months later he stopped working saying he couldn't afford child support and his bills so at this point I'm done I go to court file papers and he sends me a check the week before he is served I kind of feel bad he says he's going to end up in jail if I follow through and and is asking me to drop the petition and say I forgive the I and say I forgive the arrears with his promise to be con consistent in the future. My son has never wanted for nothing, but he could have more with financial assistance. I'm a bad person for wanting the back support and for help and for him to help more. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna. I'm hoping that you can select this email on time. You can call me Jane. I have a 15 year old son who wears a size 14 shoe, and also has braces. His father is 10 years older than me. And when we were together was nothing but verbally and violent abuse. He even spit on me. After years of battle and me saying, fuck you, I'm going to get a child support order. And we're through. My son has an excellent relationship with his father without me having to force it upon him. He owes me $40,000 in child support. Once he found out that I was having another child, he said he wasn't going to contribute to another man's child. Let's fast forward. Seven years ago, he got caught by child support and they started taking double the amount out of his paycheck. Later on, two months later, as a matter of fact, he stopped working, saying he couldn't afford child support and his bills. So at this point, I'm done. I have to go to court, file papers. And once I file my papers, he then sends me a check the week before he gets served. I feel kind of bad. He says he's going to end up in jail if I follow through and ask him I follow through. And is asking me to drop the petition. And I can say that I forgive his arrears and promise to be consistent in the future. My son has never wanted for anything, but he could have more with financial assistance. Am I a bad person for wanting the back support and for help from him? Soul Jane. First of all, forty thousand dollars is somebody's salary for the year. Who the hell owns? Who the hell owes forty thousand dollars in child support? And he just was now getting caught up. What makes it so bad is these men these days are women too who have child support. They really don't feel like they have the responsibility or want to take the initiative to take care of their children. If you owe money, you owe money. That's that's what it is. It's 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 a two parent job. It takes two people to make a baby. Whether you guys are together or not, he still or she still is supposed to be supportive to the child and take care of that child. Whether it's to the mother, to the father, or to the grandparents. Whoever is taking care of the child deserves their right to get child support. I didn't ask for this baby to be here by itself. I didn't ask for you to leave. I didn't ask for any of this. So if you're a bad person, then I must be a hell of a horrible person. Because I'm sorry, but I want my child support. Because I take care of my kids. I bust my ass. I have my little hustles. I bust my ass to take care of my kids and my household. And for you to skate around for free and do whatever you want to do and not have any worries is some bullshit. Now, just like my ex-husband, he said the same thing to me. Okay, basically, he was like... um, he rather send me this stuff to, to give them. He don't want to send me no child support. And I'm like, you know, that's what broke niggas say. That's what broke niggas say. Oh, no, the kid is straight. The kid is straight. You can't be that fucking straight if you're not worried about your kids, okay? This is what I'm talking about. Me as a parent, I wouldn't feel right within myself to go around and buy myself nice, lavish things or just nice things in general or just buy myself stuff and take care of my bills. Do you not stop and think about does your kid need something? Do they need pencils, paper, underwear, socks, clothing? Do they need something? 
These type of people that don't think like that are nothing but low down selfish people. So I would not stop for once and worry about his feelings because actually, Jane, he wasn't too concerned about your feelings when he told you he's not going to contribute any money for the next person's child. Nobody asked your sorry ass to contribute money to my new baby is to come. I'm asking you to take care of the one that we have in common. Who said anything about you taking care of the next man's child? This is the bullshit that you hear and this is what the excuse is out of some men's and some women's mouth. That they feel like if I'm giving you child support money, you're going to do something else with it. You know what? It's not in your goddamn business what I do for my child support money. If I pay a fucking light bill with that child support money, just realize that them lights is still turned on for your child to see and fucking eat and watch TV and do whatever else there is in the household because that is a part of support. If I take my own hard-earned money and buy that child a pair of sneakers, sneakers, some braces, some fucking clothes or whatever else he needs and then I take your check money and pay my light bill with, with, with it, then so fucking be it because your child lives there and that is a child and that is the support that you're giving him. So it doesn't really matter what you do with the money as long as you're doing something positive with it by all means taking care of the child whether it be to pay a water bill, buy the child a meal, pay the child's phone bill, school supplies or what have you. You are taking care of the child. So it's so sad. Stop being so fucking stingy with your shit because that child did not ask to be here. So start, don't give him that little violin when you got to play for him because that's what he's fiddling to you. He wants you to feel sorry for him. And you know what? He didn't really feel sorry for you when he owed you $40,000. I wish a motherfucker would owe me $40,000 because I'm taking your car, your house, everything in your closet, your cooking utensils, your silverware, your goddamn stove, oven, TV, dishwasher, dishwasher, and freaking... um dryer. I'm taking everything that adds up to $40,000 because I, you're not about to owe me $40,000. So if you owe somebody $40,000, your son is 15 years old. To me, that seems like he never paid shit. He didn't never ever pay nothing. Okay. And who gives a damn if he has to work two or more jobs because they taken double. That's what his ass need to do. Who in their right mind quits a job because they can't afford child support and their bills. So now you can't afford nothing. What are you? Your next step is to be homeless and be on the streets and not have anything. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. I'd rather just be homeless than take care of my responsibilities. And that'll say a lot for me as a man. And for my 15 year old son, he'll look at me even better because he'll say, my dad, a lazy son of a bitch and he doesn't do anything and the best thing to do is run away from your problems and when you have kids don't take care of them quit your job don't pay your bills and live off of whoever you can live off of and that's the way you get through life no Jane fuck him okay and especially fuck him if he spit on you that just means right there that just shows you right there that he don't have no respect or regards for you if somebody spits on you that means that they don't give a fuck about you, your feelings, who you are, what you're capable of doing. They do not care. Spitting on someone is the worst thing possible. I would rather have you smack the shit out of me than spit in my face. I mean, when you spit on somebody, then you know what? That all rules are broken. There's no rules to anything left anymore. Which means, like, if you spit on me, I might just kill your ass. I might just have you jumped. I don't know what I might do, but it's no holes bars, basically, because you spit on me. And as a man spitting on a woman, you are a disgusting pig. So I would not feel sorry for him. Oh, it's just a coincidence he gave you some money when you served him, or right before you served him. Did he know about the child support coming along? Did he know that you went down in court and filed all paper, filled papers out? Because if he did, that's the reason why he gave you the money. There, he wasn't going to give you shit anyway. He only gave you that money to appease you and to allow you to go into court and feel bad for him and tell him, or the judge rather, listen, I want to pull back my court. I wouldn't feel sorry for him at all. There's lots of men out there who owe $500 and have been in jail. That's nobody's problem but their own, okay? You can't go around sticking your dick in everybody and thinking that it's okay and make babies and run off to the next state or run off to the next woman and think that she don't have to do anything and start a whole new life. It does not work like that. When you make a baby, you take care of the baby. I have five kids, okay? Five, okay? Five kids. 
and my ex-husband does not take care of my two daughters with him he don't do shit i haven't heard from him which i'm glad because don't call me because you're just full of shit anyway but he has not called and tried to talk to his kids in like over two months which is fine because all you do is feed them lies you know or you want to find out what i'm doing through them on the phone and it's really like you know what there's really no need for you to call he doesn't do anything he hasn't done anything for them in the longest he's not sent them anything for their birthdays for christmas that just passed or anything like that all he's worried about is getting someone to steal him some clothes and send it to me which i don't really need okay keep your stolen goods to yourself because i really don't need them now as far as support money please he don't send that and i could care less I'm not going to beg you. What I'll do is I'll take your black ass to court and then they'll just take it out of your check and then see how you survive. Now, my boyfriend who I'm with now, who is also the father of my 17-year-old um, my son, he takes care of all my kids. Well, not my oldest son, who's 23 in New York. I don't even speak to him because he's just a lost case. Okay, he's just disrespectful. But he takes care of my other four kids. Or not even my 19-year-old because she has her own job. But he takes care of his son and he takes care of my two daughters, all right? He sends them money. He buys them stuff because, you know, right now he's away for his job. And he will be back this month for, for good to stay at home. But when he gets a paycheck, he sends money to make sure that these kids get what they need. They got sneakers for school. They got clothes. They got everything that they need. Phone bills is paid for them. So here it is. You got somebody else who's taking on the responsibility of someone else, which is a beautiful thing and it's a blessing, but it's still sad and pathetic that your sorry ass as a man cannot handle your business, but you think you can handle your business in the bedroom by putting it down, but you really didn't put too much work in it. You just stuck it in and then you ran. So Jane, don't feel sorry for him. He's a lost cause. If he goes to jail, well, you know what? Maybe he'll learn his lesson and then he, therefore he'll never miss another the child support payment at all so don't pull back don't feel bad you feeling bad is exactly where he wants you to be okay you're letting him get in your ear you're allowing him to talk to you cut your communication short you have already been verbally abused physically abused a spit on so there's really not much for you and him to talk about it's either about your son spending time with him or nothing at all all of the extra court stuff and child support battle that could be handled in court but not as you too so i wouldn't even worry about his sorry ass that's his problem and i had to turn my fan on because i was getting hot so yeah, let Jane know how you feel about that. I really wouldn't care less if he went to jail and spent a, a, a lifetime in there. That's not my problem. It's sad because we as women, or just single parents rather, we struggle taking care of our kids to make ends meet, to put food on the table, to pay bills, and then they got the one that's out there who doesn't give a damn. But here we are struggling, struggling. It's like we don't never get a vacation. We don't never get a day off. We don't never get a break. So I could care less if he felt like he was going to pay you every week or every day. That's not my problem. You should have been taking care of that. Now we got to take it to these drastic measures by going to the court. I never feel sorry for no man who don't take care of their kid. And when they come with that little violin trying to play, like, oh, I'm sad, but I'm going to jail. Oh, well, nigga, bye. Bye, bitch. I hope somebody got your commissary and don't drop that motherfucking soap. Okay? Mm. So, next one. Ah, uh, let's see. So, this one right here, I love it when the names are changed for me because it just makes it so much easier. Hey April, I'm writing because I really need your advice with something and I know you will keep it real. I will change the name so you don't have to. My name is Paradise and I have been with my boyfriend Sam for about six months. Last month he went down to the store with his ex his ex-girlfriend Clara and her kids and ended up getting arrested for a warrant for violation of probation. He claimed that the only reason he went with her is because he wanted to tell her about me and hopefully salvage their friendship because he said she was a good friend. Well, when he was arrested, he had to give her his car and phone. Clara began calling my phone and calling me a side bitch and stated that they were there on a family vacation, even though none of her kids are by Sam. I was so pissed. When Sam called me from the jail, from jail, I cursed his ass out. He said what Clara was saying was not true and that I needed to calm down. Since she had his phone, she had access to his Instagram and Facebook. So she went on there and deleted everything that Sam had ever posted on my page. Sam is telling me that Clara is just upset that he found someone else and she doesn't want to just be friends. 
she tells me stories about how he still tells her that he loves her and he pops up at the door unannounced. I know that some of the things that she is saying are lies, but I know everything can't be a lie. I am three months pregnant with Sam's child and I don't know what to do. He said he loves me and wants to be uh, and wants to have our, fa our happy family, but I feel like I'm being lied to and I don't know what to believe. He was sentenced to a month and will be getting out in a week. Clara is constantly calling me to come get his car, but I'm not stupid. I know this bitch. I know I don't know this bitch or what she is capable of. I have been I have been by Sam's side the whole time he was locked up, getting in contact with his PO and lawyer, trying to resolve the issue. He said I'm the only one who has been helping him, and he greatly appreciates me. I don't know if I should stay with him or just move on. Please help, Paradise. Well, Miss Paradise. Seems like you got yourself a little um, triangle going on there. You got Sam, then you got Clara, and then you got that baby on the way. Now, first of all, I'm going to just be real with you, okay? Not judging you, okay? But you guys been together for six months and you're three months pregnant. Don't you think that should have waited a little bit longer? I mean, shit happens, okay? It does happen. I, I'm going to be the first to say that it happened to me. Um, but... With this day and age, you got to really, like, inspect niggas before you lay down with them. Like, you, it's so bad, but you have to kind of almost hire a private investigator to scope the dude out to the man that you're involved with because they tell so many lies, and this goes for women, too. They tell so many lies that you don't know what to believe, and it's more or less their representative that you meet in the beginning. And I've said this in videos before. You never meet someone as their real self because had you met this person as their real self, they wouldn't be with you. You probably wouldn't want to fuck with them because their real self is probably some really grimy, trifling shit that you're just not ready to deal with. So you meet the representative and the representative goes on for quite some time until you really, really good in there. So six months is really not that good in there for a relationship. You guys are still like courting each other. If that's what they call it. Y'all cannot really say y'all are serious about one each other because it's only been six months. And some people take six months as a lifetime. Like, oh my God, I've been with him for six months. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. Get over it and open your fucking eyes, okay? It's six months. That shit is nothing compared to what others have been through, like myself, 16 damn years, okay? Hmm. And it all happens to be really great within those six months. Trust me. And then that person changes and then you yourself are no longer your representative. You take off your mask and you show the real you. Like I've done, okay? Of course, you got to hook them and reel them in. Because if I was to ever be who I really am, like April, just, just be April. And meet somebody, like meet a man, if I was looking for one, but I'm not. But if I was, I'm pretty sure he would be like, she's a bitch. I ain't fucking with her. And yeah, okay? And I, I, that's how I am. So I have to put on my nicey nice side and be really, really nice and... You know, after we've gotten in good or whatever, then you're about to see who the hell I really am. Like, I'm not putting up with your bullshit type shit. And just like with the boyfriend I have now, um, my fiancé, if you want to call him that, um, my soon-to-be husband, um, he's already known me. Okay, we have a kid together. So he's already known me. So he already knows the type of person I am. However, he always says to me, you're not the, you're not, you're not the same person that, that I, I remember. No, dude, I'm really not. This is like a um, 15, 16 years later. I'm not the same person. Um, he says I'm, I'm real mean. I'm mean, and I'm, I'm not mean. I'm just, I'm straightforward, and I don't really put up with too much shit because of all the shit that I have been through. But you want to know about should you leave him alone or what? First of all, Clara keep calling your damn phone. I wouldn't go to her house neither because you're three months pregnant and why would you want to go to your house, her house? You don't really know what she's capable of, like you said. You don't know really what you're walking into. And you can go over there and she can say anything that you came over there and did something to her. You're starting to her and then you and Sam are both in fucking jail. So, yeah. And about the whole he went to the store with her, but she said it was a family vacation. How long was his ass gone? Because if he went to the store... He shouldn't have been gone that long. If it's a family vacation, that's like a couple of days. So that's where I'm a little bit iffy about. But far as him telling you that he wants to make sure that they continue ha having a friendship together because she's a really good friend, but they don't have any kids together, that's some BS. He wants to have friends with benefits, meaning some pussy on the side. She's the side bitch, not you, okay? 
she's the side bitch and she doesn't like that and that's why she's coming out and this is just what I'm getting at it because here's my thing if I used to mess with you and we had a relationship but we're not together no more I don't really want to be your friend I don't want to be your friend because we broke up for a reason and it was either because you're an asshole or I'm an asshole or we're both assholes and we just don't see eye to eye so I don't really feel like we should be friends with each other. You know, I don't need to make sure that our friendship stays strong. You were a good friend, but you couldn't be a good boyfriend or a good girlfriend. Get the fuck out of here. That's some bullshit. And you know it. Sam is pulling the wool over your eyes. He's trying to tell you that. So that way, that's his excuse to still be able to talk to her and still be able to visit with her kids. And whenever she calls, you won't get too upset and feel like, why the fuck is this bitch keep calling? Oh, because we're really good friends, babe. That's why. She's a really good friend. She just needs some advice on a relationship. Nigga, please. Okay? You want to continue to be her friend so that you can get her friend benefits on the side. Ain't nobody going to be friends with a female for no reason if less, unless unless they want something and if they already had it nine times out of ten i really don't think that they're going to make good friends so if they've already had a relationship he knows your kids well and they're still hanging out nine times out of ten he's fucking her okay and she's the side bitch now you both might be side bitches because sam could be playing to both of y'all he might not take both of y'all really serious however i really can't say about him but this is my one thing with you I would keep my eyes wide the hell open because she's telling you all of this extra shit. Like, I hate when females do that. When they find out that the girl, the, their ex-man got a new girl, they get all hateful and jealous. Well, he was over here and he was doing that and he was doing this. Like, what do you guys get out of that? Like, who does that shit? Like, here's my thing. I don't really give a shit about your new girlfriend, okay? Just make sure that bitch don't disrespect me, okay? I don't care about that bitch. Like, seriously, I don't want you to be my friend. I don't want to be her friend. I'm not telling you the bullshit that we've done did and stuff. She's telling you all this shit to get you mad so that you can leave Sam alone and she don't have to be the side bitch no more. She could be the main bitch. Have you ever really figured out why they broke up? Okay. Why did they break up? And now she's got his phone and his car and she's telling you to come over there and get his car. First of all, if I had his car... I'm going to be calling and telling you to get a, um, come over and get it. I'll be riding that bitch around like through till the wheels fall off, okay? Just like she's using his phone and going on his Instagram and doing all that kind of catty bullshit, okay? I would be riding his motherfucking cars, his wheels around until I couldn't ride no more. Using up his gas and his mileage and all of that good shit. I wouldn't be telling you to come get his car. So that's just a plot to get your ass over there. Maybe to fight with you or to confront you or just to get all up in your space. So, no, Paradise, stay your ass away from her. And as for her calling your phone, first of all, Sam about to be out of jail. And I don't really think that the phone calls are going to stop because the bitch probably got your number memorized in her fucking memory bank. So she's going to call you from her own number. However, I would let her know, bitch, if you call my phone one more goddamn time, I'm going to go and go to the police station and get your ass for harassment and see how you like that. And you'll be in the next cell next to Sam's ass. Okay? I'm just saying. And that'll be your family vacation. Because I can't take but for too long. See now, you you pregnant. So I wouldn't advise you to go to the house. But if it were me and you kept calling my phone and harassing me, I'm probably going to end up seeing you somewhere. And I'm going to knock you upside your damn dome piece. Because you're not going to keep harassing me. And then what you can do is you can change your number too. That'll make it a whole lot easier. You don't have to hear from this scandalous ass bitch. So, as far as you and Sam having a family, well, Paradise, I'm going to be honest with you. Your ass ain't really living in paradise right now. Now, are you? No. You're about to have a baby with somebody that you've known for six months, and you really don't know what he's capable of doing and what his background is because you're asking me for help. So, for one, I'm going to tell you this, to be honest. You should have waited to have a baby. There's always this thing called protection and use birth control because you don't know if he is really laying down with Clara and coming back with all kinds of diseases, the clap, gonorrhea, STDs, whatever have you. So therefore, now you have this young man that you're with six months and you guys are three months into your pregnancy. It didn't take no time at all. You really don't know him. You do not know him like that. Six months is really not long enough to get to know someone. I'm really not going to say I'm serious about anyone in six months. 
I'm just really not. Okay, no matter how much you say you love me and you offer me, I'm not going to believe that shit. Because six months is not a long time at all. And like I said, there's their representative. So the best thing for you to do in your situation is keep your eyes open and stop believing all the bullshit that he says to you. Because I really think they probably were on a family vacation. Not at the fucking store. Okay? And as far as her calling your phone and all of this shit... Please, change your fucking number and don't go bothering her and getting his car back. Let him worry about his own shit. And as far as you helping him while he's in jail and shit, okay, yeah, they appreciate it. I would appreciate it too if a stranger on the street helped me get out of jail. You think I wouldn't appreciate that shit? Hell yeah. Thanks a lot, stranger. I'm glad you got me the fuck out. Can we be friends, okay? Of course he's going to be appreciative. You ain't doing nothing that the next bitch don't do, okay? I've been there, done, did that shit already. And some of them appreciate that shit for this much time. Meaning this little bit of time. And then as soon as they get out, they on a fuckery bullshit. But as far as him wanting to be her friend and remain friends, tell that nigga to go sit his ass down in the corner because we are not in grammar school. We don't make friends like Drake says. No new friends. That's a friend that he really doesn't need. And he needs to cut all communication ties off to her. And if you keep allowing him to be her friend, then you're a dumbass and you'll never be in paradise. And he's just going to make you and her the side bitch. Okay? So that's my advice to you. And Divas, of course, let paradise know, is she really living in paradise? Or is she really, really, like, bamboozled? Hmm. Now this is from one of my international ladies. And I'm going to call her Nat. Yeah. I, I am wa Hi, Diva. I am watching your Real Talk since years now. Now, mind you, she's from Ireland, so her English is not as good as ours. Okay? I am watching your Real Talk since years now. And now, and now I'd love to get some advice from you. First, let me say I changed my name so you don't waste time on that. My name is Nat. I'm 31 and I live in Ireland. It's all about my relations with my mom. And I love the way they say it, with my mom. And since you have kids and you really experience in being a mom and dealing with your adults, maybe you can help me. Our relationship was always tense. I don't know why, because as an older child, I was always trying to do what my parents expected. I was a rather good student, didn't party a lot, I wasn't messing around, etc. But since early years, when I was 11 to 12, my mom was making fun of my looks. Not only clothes, style, hair, but also my weight. She is petite, petite, thin as a stick, and I'm like my dad, big boned and tall. But I was never fat. I, always, I was always seeing myself as normal and healthy. I must mention that she never cooked. She can survive a day on one croissant or a tomato. Whew. I had to cook for myself, my younger sister, and my dad. And of course she was bringing them down too. Don't eat that much because you're getting fat. Eat only veggies. I have to mention that my dad is a golden dad. He never said a bad word. He fully accepts me and my sister, our life, our looks, and our decisions. One day, when I was 13, and as I look at all the pictures, I was a pretty fit teen. She said out loud, you don't fit in these shorts. I wore them when I was pregnant. You must lose weight now. That's when I realized I'm not meeting her expectations, and she's not accepting me as I am. It was the same situation with my sister. She was always struggling with her body image. But she is kind of a rebel, and I just feel that my mom always preferred her than me. Years passed, and during all this time, I moved as quickly as I could because I wanted to be independent. Had my own money, so I started my own business. I, thought my, I, thought, I taught myself how to do braids, dreads, and hair extensions. And I was the only one in my city doing this job, so I was doing very well. I was studying and working, living by myself, never asking for money for my parents. I was looking pretty good, too. But my mom kept attacking me from time to time. Stop eating white bread. You want to get real fat? What are your life goals? You want to be a hairdresser doing people's hair for the rest of your life? I tried to fight back saying that I like the way I look and my job is none of her business. Because I'm working, earning good money. Then I graduated, got, got two UNI diplomas and changed my work a couple of times. Finally, I became a social media expert and I run my own company. I work from home. But she's not happy with that. She says that it's only for now. It's not a real job as a secretary and doctor or lawyer. It's just a hype and I will lose everything in a couple of years because the internet is going to end one day. I think she doesn't understand how social media works and that my job and skills are really helpful for many companies. 
See, so she's never happy with my life choices and my looks. And I forgot to mention she's a housewife who doesn't have to work. My dad is providing everything she needs. I also was single for some time. I ended up, I ended my long-term relationship a couple of years ago and had a lot of fun as a single woman in a big city. And now I'm in a happy relationship with my fiance. My mom didn't like him in the beginning, but now she's all happy that we're getting married. And now to the, fin to the finale of the story. When she found out that I'm getting married, she asked me to come home and talk to her honestly. I thought that I was about, to, um, about the wedding plans, but I was wrong. This is her words. Natalie, are you sick? Did you see your doctor? Is everything okay with your health and hormones? I'm asking because I'm worried. You're obese. Every time you come here, you seem to get bigger and bigger. You're bloated. What's wrong with you? Did you get? Did you weigh yourself? Look in the mirror. I love you and I'm scared. Your fiance is younger than you. If you don't lose weight, he will find someone younger and slimmer. You can't get married if you look like that. Yes, that's what she said. I cried for two days. I don't know why she hates me so much. Can you as a parent explain to me how can a mother say things like this to a child and think it's okay? Do you discuss your children's looks and weight? I'm a grown woman and I feel this will never end. She's not accepting me in my life. Always bringing me down. Never said a kind word. She doesn't listen. I can't talk to her. I just can't. I avoid meeting her. I always meet my dad during his lunch breaks. I try to talk to him but he's like, you know how mom is. Don't worry. He's very proud of me, but he can't put a feet he can't put a foot down. My sister tried talking to her, but it didn't work. And finally, I attached a picture of, of how obese I am now. I am a confident woman and I just don't consider myself as fat. I'm size 12 and 5'9. This picture is for your eyes only, but I want you to see what she is worried about. What can I do? I'm tired of her, and to be honest, I really don't want to see her. I send you all my love from Europe. Thank you for your time in advance, April. Now, first of all, like she said, this picture is for my eyes only. She's freaking beautiful, okay? Size 12, let me tell you. First of all, Nat, I wish I was a size 12. I am a size 14, 16, okay? And you are not obese. It, You know, I remember as a child, not as a child, but I was a teen, my mom... Me and her, we, we didn't always see eye to eye. And I don't really speak to her that much like I should. And I love her to death. But sometimes they say some hurtful things. And I always remember my mom when I was like 15 and 16. She would always say the things to me like, you're a little bitch. I look better than you. Nobody's going to want you. Look at you. My mom would say things like this to me. And I would always be like, you know, it would hurt my feelings. But I would never say anything about it to her. But as I got older... You know, it still kind of bothered me, but I never said anything. I didn't let it bother me to the point where I was depressed as an adult. But I did say something to her a few years ago, like, you know, these things that you said to me about my weight. Because I was 10 years old. I'll never forget, I was 10. And I always, I would always go away for the summer um, to visit with my dad and my godparents in um, Pennsylvania. You know, I lived in New York City, so I was always spending the entire summer away with my godparents and my father in Pennsylvania. You know, in the countryside, and I was so happy. I wouldn't, I didn't have to be in New York City. I wasn't in the projects. I had all this open land, and I went to see my friends for the summer, and I just had a really great time. So, one summer I came back, and I was. I gained a lot of weight because my godparents would just constantly buy sweets and goodies. And these are the things that I never had when I was at home. So when I came back home, my mother would say mean things like, you're fat, you can't eat this. She wouldn't let me eat. She would make me drink Slim Fast. And I never forget she would have the Slim Fast and the powder because it didn't have the drinks, the shakes. She would, she would make me the Slim Fast and make me eat salad and tell me that she's not going to buy me any new school clothes until I lose weight. And she would just poke fun at my weight. And as I got older, she would say things like, she looks better than me and so forth. So I finally confronted her about this a few years ago and let her know how it hurt my feelings. She did apologize, but you know what? Sometimes women say things to their daughters that are just so uncalled for. And I will be the first to admit it. I have said things to my daughter. I've never said anything about her looks or me looking better than her. Because I would never compare myself to one of my kids. Because you are my children. There's no reason to compare yourself to your children. Unless you're jealous. Okay? Unless you're jealous. Now, I mean, to this day, my mom, she says little things that kind of get to me, like, she's Google mapped my house, and she's like, oh, how do you even find your house? You need GPS, because all the houses look the same out there. Like, damn, ain't you fucking happy for me? I, mo I moved out of New York, out of the slums, to, in the suburbs, in another state, and now you got, all you can say is, 
The rest of the houses look the same. And I had to tell her no because the other houses are single fa family houses, single floor, one family floor, one floor level houses. And I live in a, in a two-story family home, a big house. So I know my way home. And there are a couple of houses on my block that look just like mine. But who says that? So sometimes I feel like they say things just because they're jealous and they're not happy with themselves. So they feel like they need to take it out on somebody. And you're probably the one that they really want to look like. Now, as far as what you look like and you're obese, you're far from obese. Please, girl, you wear size 12. 12 is the new size, okay? Oh, plus size is the new size. It's like orange is the new black. Plus size is the new size, okay? Nobody wants anybody that's uh, skinny. And I'm sorry for you skinny girls out there that I'm saying this and I don't mean no harm, but I need to have a little bit of meat on my body, okay? I'd like a little substance. And I feel good that I have my little jelly roll. Not really too much about my jelly roll. But I like myself for who I am. And if you're not happy with me, then I don't know what to tell you. You're not happy with yourself. If she's constantly complaining about what you eat and she's not enjoying life, then you know what? Let her be her. Let her be a miserable person. Sits at home. She doesn't work. She doesn't have a life. She, she doesn't have anything going for her. You have things going for you. And that, everyone stopped to think, she's jealous of what you're doing, okay? She's jealous. I look at my own daughter who's 19, and I'm so proud of her. And sometimes I say, damn, I wish I could have been doing that when I was her age. Meaning she makes food for her baby, organic, fresh food. She does not buy baby dry food. I wish I could be doing these things and making little baked treats, because that's not me. But that's her, and I'm never jealous. I always promote her. So if your mom is not happy with you, let her not be happy with you. But what you need to do is tell her, listen, I am who I am, and you are who you are. And this is me, and either you accept me or you don't. I'm not going to be you. I love who I am. I love the life that I live, and I love myself. She can't make you miserable. I think you're a beautiful woman. And your size 12 is beautiful. Embrace yourself. Embrace whatever size you are. But never let anybody tear your character down. Okay? Never let anyone tear your character down and make you feel less of a person. Women are very catty. And it's sad that it has to be mother and daughter. But it's like that. And this is the real world. Sometimes it does get like that. Where they feel like it's a competition with their daughter. Because they're grown up. And they're seeing their daughter doing all of this stuff. And they feel some type of way. Like damn. I wish I would have did that. I wish I could have done that. I wish that was me. But you know what? Too little too late. So I feel like there's a small hint of jealousy there. Of what you do. So I would correct her and just let her know how you feel about yourself. So ladies, we're running out of time. I do apologize. Let Nat know how you feel. Natalie, stay beautiful and plus size because your curves are delicious, girl. And as always, I will speak to you guys on my next video. Stay diva and delicious.